Welcome to Mission Spooky. I'm your glorious host, JC, and with me is the relatively okay Kiki as a co-host. Uh, you know, you got in a lot of trouble the last time that you said that. I heard nothing. Nothing negative. Okay, so technically uh, we are recording on December 5th, and I only mention that because today would have been my very good friend's birthday, but we lost him six years ago now. So I said that I would do a shout out for Grayson Wolf today because he was an awesome dude. And I know some of my friends who listen are going to appreciate the fact that he's living on in our memory. And I think that going forward, it's to be fantastic. We do something special every December 5th in memory of him. I'm okay with that. Currently, I give to uh, a wolf foundation, like for saving wolves in the wild in his name so so i encourage everybody to do that though i think there's a wolf sanctuary within an hour of here that does walks and stuff that you could do too and i think that's one of the ones that i give to there's like three of them okay so one is definitely here in pa and then there's a couple other ones that we give to um, like if i if i sell stuff on a certain website um that allows me to put in a donation <laughs> that's what i do we i sell things on that website and then i give that money to the wolf sanctuaries in other states all right so awesome today we are going to be talking about um some spooky stuff spooky stuff on mission spooky who to thunk it it's almost like that's our job that we don't get paid for. Hey, we made some money. Oh, yes. And I, guys, we have some interesting upgrades coming to the office. Let's say that. We we finally made uh, enough money that JC, can myself, can go out and get some decorations. And we will be recording that. And it will be going, it will be a good day. It will be a good day. Let's say that. Before we get into the spooky stuff, I just want to thank everyone for listening, for all the great reviews on iTunes, the the ratings. It really means a lot because we are amateurs and we're new at this, that people actually take the time to listen to my stupid mouth. Um, We are unendingly appreciative of everything you guys, all the reviews, all the the feedback, everything you guys tell us of how much I suck. We just love it. It's good for us. Everything's always like, Kiki's wonderful, blah, blah, blah. Kiki does all the things. Oh my gosh, without Kiki, the show would probably not exist. Look, we get that you guys think that, but honestly, a little more love for JC. Thank you. (laughs) That's end of my rant. (laughs) That's actually true because I could totally do a particular part of this podcast by myself. Maybe like the magic stuff. But when it comes to the paranormal, like you need a partner. Like, what do we talk about? You need to have a paranormal buddy. You can't go it alone. Indeed. Indeed. The podcast community is amazing. All you guys are freaking awesome. And I just started listening to Ghost Story Guys and following them. And they do something completely different than what we do. And I just have to say, you got to listen to them. They're awesome. They're up in Canada. They're great. I usually don't support Canadians in anything they do because I'm a uh, blue-blooded American. Uh, however, I will I will say that the podcast that Kiki's just suggested, they're pretty good. Check them out, guys. Okay, so let's move on to the super serious stuff. Move over, Krampus. We're talking about Gryla, the Yule Witch of Iceland today. I feel like Krampus would still be able to beat the shit out of her. I mean, I know nothing about her, but I know Krampus is a badass demon. So I'm interested to see your arguments. Okay, wait until I tell you about Gryla, and you might change your opinion. So the first written account of Gryla is in the 13th century, but her story was an oral tradition that got manipulated a little bit as time went on. By the time the written account surfaces, there has been a Christianizing of the tale, and we'll see that extend to the rest of her family, including the 13 Yule Lads. So, Gryla is first mentioned as a giantess in the 13th century Norse compilation, 
The Prose Edda, written by Snorri Sturlson. That's now, a terrible name. He's also not the best at writing. I'm going to get in trouble maybe a little bit from certain heathens, but Snorri was Christianized by the time he wrote all this stuff, and I personally take almost all of what he wrote with a grain of salt, especially where Loki and Ragnarok are concerned. I hate to tell you guys, but Ragnarok isn't going to happen. Anyway, it's, yeah. I, no, they, uh, that's, we're going to talk about that a different time. The movie came out a few years ago, I think. It was a really good one. We've talked about this before. The movie <laughs> is fantastic. <laughs> and I am perfectly okay with the concept of Ragnarok being used in Marvel Comics. <laughs> However, it is not part of the heathen way of, should not be a part of the heathen way of life. And Loki is not an evil god at all. He's just a trickster. There's lots of trickster gods throughout the histories of other places. And um, he's gotten a bad rap and... Heathens better start recognizing. Start recognizing and put some respect on that name. I feel like you're a little offended. I feel like you're a bit salty about something. I don't know what it is, but I feel like it's related to the treatment of Loki. That's what I feel like it is. I may have Loki in tendencies. That's all I'm saying. I don't even know what Loki in tendencies would be, except maybe by like being a tricky person. Possibly. Maybe I'm just a devout follower. You know what's follower. interesting? I was thinking about this the other day. Usually, trickster gods are like, that's their thing. They're, they're gods of being deceitful assholes. <laughs> well, usually. Loki is the god of fire. Usually, the gods of fire are good gods because fire brings warmth, life, and like safety and security to most uh, tribes and, and civilizations. So... It's interesting that they somehow took the god of fire and somehow made him a evil deity, which is rare. Because Loki's also the god of knowledge. And what do Christians hate the most? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with non-Christians. And also knowledge. I mean, let's face it. Let's, let's go back to biting the apple of knowledge or the you know the fruit of knowledge god forbid gods forbid we should yeah, know yeah. anything no god actually did forbid it <laughs> that was his like one rule <laughs> that was the first god forbid <laughs> thank you for proving my point exactly thank you exactly god forbid you know anything right because then it's then then you're too smart you're too good can't know it then you might get a clue that what you're following is not really the be-all, end-all of existence. So wait, is this episode uh, shit-talking Christians the entire time? I thought that was going to be uh, next episode. Actually, I mean, no. This this is the... I get to shit-talk a little bit about Christians because they managed to steal a lot of heathen traditions, which I'm not going to get into all of it, but... Wait, there's some are you it. saying that Christians stole traditions from other religions? Fuck, I never... W shit! God, you, I think you got something on, I think you got the nail on the head. I think you did. No, the, the next episode <laughs> it's gonna is going to be, be even funnier because I'm going to be talking about, and we're just, we're going to let you know now, what the hell, if you're listening, I'm going to let you know. It's going to be about Christian traditions that are so crazy that I don't want to ever hear a Christian talk about heathen or pagans being nuts because they believe in X, Y, Z gods. You got, you Christians have got some crazy stuff and that's next week we're gonna be talking about all of that crazy stuff and it's gonna be so funny i actually am not sure i'm gonna be able to not laugh the entire time yeah for once i'm gonna have to try and rein kiki in and not the other way around uh because i'm going into this as per usual blind I mean, full of knowledge and i know everything but knowledge is bad jc so i'm not a christian <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge is good to me. Knowledge equals power. Power equals money. Money equals <laughs> pizza and potatoes. Okay, so Gryla becomes connected with Christmas, though, in the 17th century. So long after the Christianization of, of Iceland at that point. Current day Gryla can detect children who are misbehaving any time of the year. So awesome parenting tool. During Christmas, she leaves her home of Dimaborga, which I'm sorry if I completely screw that up america like the english language it's very difficult for us to make some of the sounds sometimes that we're supposed to make with icelandic so if i have any icelanders listening i'm gonna apologize a lot in this episode because <laughs> i think it's like dim dimaborga borger why don't we just 
right off the bat do an apology for every miss and, and then we don't have to do all the apologies just one statement about like cover blanket apology we're sorry we're americans and we're so sorry that our country is better than yours I and was actually. We decide to ha- say we we basically decide how to pronounce the words. You guys can get over it. That's that's going to be our apology. Wow, that is not what I was going to say at all. I was going to be like, I'm so sorry that we are Americans. But anyway, <laughs> <clears throat> so Dima Borga, a uh, great band too. Shout out. Uh, she leaves her home there to go to nearby towns in search of her meal, which is bad children. She hunts children and carries them home in a giant sack, and then she cooks them into a stew and devours them. Yay! I mean, I do the same, except we sell them at supermarkets. Well, I mean, moms bring them to supermarkets. I don't have to actually hunt them. I just wait until they get lost in an aisle, and then I eat them. So, on that note, let's talk a little bit... <laughs> About the idea of cannibalism and how it's not new to children's tales. Oh, wow. I didn't know I was doing a segue. <laughs> so you have Hansel and Gretel, Jack and the Beanstalk, and Snow White, for examples. But Snow White does differ a bit because the queen consumes just her liver and lungs in the original story. Okay. And she does it so that she can take on the characteristics of Snow White, meaning like her beauty. Yeah. So that is a little bit more uh, the the parts of the world where cannibalism is eating your enemies to gain their strength. As I recommend you do. So Wait, what about James and the giant or the beanstalk? You said that one. Where's cannibalism in that? Because giants and humans aren't the same creature. You can make an argument for that. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll die on this hill. It's not cannibalism. It's the food chain. So I think that the way that Grimm's fairy tale was talking about it was okay. that was that giants were just an offshoot of the race of men. So fee fi fo fum, I smell the blood or the flesh of an Englishman. So they didn't know who Englishmen were. So I feel like they were just another form of humans. I mean, they look like humans, even though they're just really big. But they ate people. So there's your cannibalism. I don't know. It's not cannibalism. <clears throat> I'm going with that. That's all I got. Um, anyway, these stories are made to scare children into being good, <laughs> as well as teach them, teaching them about death and the consequences of their actions, and also survival in times that were not that great to live in, like the 17th and 18th centuries, for example. Wait, you mean having a chance of dying of any random plague? Was not that great? Not having indoor plumbing and running water wasn't fantastic? Oh my gosh. I mean, just that's just part of it. What about just randomly, if you got hurt, you got a scrape, and then the next thing you know, your your leg's being sawed off, you know, because you got infection. Yeah, and it was weird because, like, I got the scrape on my arm and somebody's chopping my leg off. I don't get it. I don't don't get it. Or, hey, you have the plague. Let's cover you in leeches. (laughs) Why? Oh, they sucked the blood out of you. The poison blood. Ha! I don't like this. Please, no. Medicine, please? So, according to folklore, Gryla has been married three times. Uh, she ate at least one of her other husbands because she was bored with him. Good honor. Hashtag feminism. Technically, she is Iceland's first feminist. I was just going to say that. Oh, wow. Wow, I'm really good with segues today. It almost as if you got sleep. Oh my god, I I slept so much last night. I'd like to state for our listeners that today is one of seven days I've had off since a long time ago. About two and a half months. I've had seven days. I've hated my life. It's okay, though. Is it? Is it okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm good now. I'm good. Okay, I got the tears out. Don't go into the dark place again, okay? I'm not pulling you out of there again. No, that's tomorrow. Okay, so her third husband, Lepa Ludi, <laughs> a lazy SOB. He stays at home in the cave at Dima Borga, but he's not alone. All of Gryla's children, upwards of 40 of them, reside there as well as the big black Yule cat. Best cat ever. I mean, it's okay. So the Yule cat seems 
to be a clever device to convince children that it's super cool to get clothes for Yule or Christmas. The cat stalks those who are ill-equipped for the coming winter and eats them, which is like the ultimate fashion police. So I feel like in the 13th to 18th century, having clothes is like the best thing you could have. Especially if you live in some place called Icelandic. Like you're just... Iceland. Iceland. But it, you know, you're just... It's cold there, okay? Now I know... They renamed Iceland, even though it was... I, I know. And I know Greenland's not actually green, okay? But it's still bloody cold. They need clothing to keep warm. Though referred to as an ancient tradition, written accounts of the Yule Cat have been located as recently as the 19th century. The threat of being eaten by the Yule Cat was used by farmers as an incentive for their workers to finish processing the autumn wool before Christmas. Boy, that... <clears throat> that's real nice go figure your boss is like if you don't finish this like this giant black cat is gonna come out of the mountains and eat you i would purposely not finish whatever project i'm on just to fight a giant cat i'd be i'd be there axe shield in hand ready to go ready to go and then if nothing happens i'm using the axe on the boss how dare he lie to me hashtag worker rights so the <laughs> ones who took part in the work would be rewarded with new clothes there you go so the guys who were like i ain't doing that because i want to fight a giant cat well you didn't get any clothes for the winter and then you died anyway i died but on my principle on them like literally with, on them with my principles intact whatever okay i got sleep but i'm still stupid okay <laughs> all knowingly stupid though you're a walking oxymoron right wow wow i don't know what you know i feel like i just got called a moron that's that's rude hashtag rude the cat has alternately been described as merely eating away the food without eating them okay because they didn't have clothes it was actually popularized by a uh, a poem by a guy who i'm not even no try johannes or coldlum no, i think you got it yeah because i i oh god my german i'm, I'm studying german but what's the o with a little it's an umlau right the o with the two dots above it that's a u with two dots is an umlau wait oh. no the so umlau the is o? just the two dots okay well what's the o with the two dots how is that I, supposed to sound is why it like are you asking me like, oh? because you spoke german you were being I, studied german longer yes. than me but I don't know how to write German. I, I feel like only it's know how to say Kurt, Kultlum, Kultlum, Kultlum. I don't know. <laughs> well, also, just excuse the hell out of me, Germany as well. Now we're going to get into some some fun stuff. Oh, we haven't already been having fun? <laughs> I've been having some, a blast. Some more fun things. Oh, exciting. <laughs> uh, so all of all Gryla's children, because apparently she was very prolific and she had over 40. Yeah, that's, I mean, she's been alive for a while, you know. And she's had three husbands. She only ate the one. Yeah, I've eaten at least seven husbands. Not mine, but other people's. Uh, okay, so there's 13 of them, though, that become popularized at Christmas time. And these are the 13 Yule Dads. As I mentioned earlier, these guys were shifted from being tricksters to mischievous gift givers when I was talking about how things got Christianized as it went along. So so the, the Yule Lads started off being like just complete a-holes and causing trouble for everybody. Nowadays, they're gift givers with a little bit of mischief. See, we were ta just talking about this. They're just mischief makers. They're not evil. They just like to, well, you'll find out because their names actually correspond with the mischief that they like to do. I'm okay? excited. I know. I'm so excited to hear these names for the first time that I definitely haven't heard I, or read before. I am not. I'm going to try to say some of the names in Icelandic. That alone is going to be hysterical. Okay. Because I suck at it. So today the names have stayed the same and um, they buy or they, they bring gifts to children and place them in their best shoes for the 13 nights before Christmas, which is why we're talking about them this week, because they're going to start coming starting on December the 12th will be the first one that comes down from Dimmaborga. Okay. Which and by the way, we're releasing this episode on the 10th. So you guys have two days to get your shoes out and ready or so help you. These motherfuckers, they'll shit on you. <laughs> That's the next episode. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and now I'm not going to be able to stop laughing. God You're damn it. Welcome. I'm so happy I could do this. Well, that's the episode. It's a wrap. Kiki's dead from laughing, guys. <laughs> and I don't know how to do any of this. You place your best shoes out for the 13 nights before Christmas, which is a kind of a tradition influenced by St. Nicholas Day, which is on the 6th of December. But St. Nicholas is really just 
Odin. So just going to throw that out there for you guys. Hold on to your butts. We're going to do this. Butts are being held on to. All right. So our first guy is Steck Jarstor or Sheep Coat Clod in English translation. He will arrive on December the 12th and he will be the first one then to depart on December 25th. Oh, nice. So what do you think that Sheep Coat Clod does? If he doesn't put shoes on all of your sheep i don't know and then you have to hear your sheep like walking around in like wooden clogs just (laughs) like it would just be noisy and uh exhausting how far was i before we go any further with any of jc's explanations of what these little guys look like or or what they're doing if we have any artists out there that want to do some cool little artist renditions to share with us i think that would be freaking hysterical it would be. Okay, so you're definitely writing that he, he does deal with sheep. I mean, Duh. it's kind of in the name. It's kind of implied, yes. So he harasses sheep, but he's impaired because he has uh, a st- stiff peg legs. So he himself is the peg leg. So he's clodding around. Oh, okay. But not bad. See, this is, this is going to be easy because some of these are super, like, transparent. Oh, okay. I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. So Gils Jagar, Gower, maybe it's Gower, Gils Jagar, his English name is Gully Gawk. So what do you think he does? Uh, Well, gullies are little, little like um, ravines type deal things, Uh, to the best of my knowledge, which is all of it. Uh, Hmm. What's his name again? He's Gully Gawk. Does he just look at you from, from gullies? Is that... Does he just gawk at you from gullies? You are very close. He hides in gullies Uh and waits for the opportunity to sneak into a cow shed and steal milk. And he arrives on December 13th, by the way. Oh, that's rude. Which is going to be Friday the 13th. So don't let him steal your milk on Friday the 13th. I recommend using a machete to protect your milk and maybe a hockey mask. Hockey mask and machete. Yeah, yeah. Be about six foot ten. Have a hockey mask, have a machete and be a never dying zombie creature. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so uh, the next guy arrives on December 14th. Okay. And, That's a good day. Right. His name is... Oh my God, wait. Do you remember... We just talked about Friday the 13th. Do you remember... Oh God, you're so fucking young. There was a movie called Saturday the 14th. Was there? (laughs) There is. And it's a comedy, like poking fun at Friday the 13th. Oh, I would have never guessed that's what they were doing. So December the 14th is Stodifer. And his English name is Stubby. I mean, I'm just going to assume that he's he's like a fat little gremlin-esque character. Maybe wearing a bunch of pots and pans. I'd like to think that he wears a lot of pots and pans. I mean, no, I, I want him cute. to be ugly, not cute. No, they, I think it'd be cute. Um, He's abnormally short. Okay. And he steals pans ah. to eat crust out of what's left in them. What's oh, left in the pans. Okay. So like pie pans and stuff. He'll eat the crust out of them. That's a sad life. Damn, son. You are really good at guessing this stuff. I'm yeah, impressed. I'm whew, just coming up with it off the top of my head. You know, it's all my knowledge. <sighs> Next guy comes in on December 15th and he leaves on the December 28th. And oh boy, I am going to wreck this name. You can do it. Thorles Laker. <laughs> because I think that's supposed to be a TH sound. I apparently... I don't disagree with your pronunciation. And I would say anyone that pronounces it differently, they're wrong. Thorles Laker. Spoon Laker in English. What do you think he ooh, does? Ooh, if he doesn't lick the spoons, I'd like to think, okay, he probably licks all the dirty spoons. But I want him to go into your like your your silverware drawer and lick all the clean ones and put them back, <laughs> just to be a dickhead. Like, but he probably just cleans the, or licks the 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 dirty ones and gets the grime and stuff off of them. Yes, he steals and licks wooden spoons, and he's extremely thin due to malnutrition because I guess you don't really get that much food off of licking spoons. And no, Gryla doesn't feed him apparently. Well, and he he only does this 12 12 days a year or 13 days a year or however many days a year. So, you know what? For him, I'm going to leave a spoon with a a wooden spoon with a lot of food on it because I feel sad for him. 
and then I'm going to catch him in a net and I'm going to beat him up. I liked where you were going with just leaving the spoon out. I thought that was really sweet. And I thought, <laughs> you know what? Like, maybe I'll do that this year because we don't really, we have never celebrated this. And I thought it was really cute for the kid, uh-huh. right? Um, to leave the shoes out because they do that in Denmark, Catholics, because we did it in Catholic school. On St. Nicholas Day, Uh, we did like we would leave our shoes out and the teachers would put stuff in our shoes, which was sweet, except if you had stinky feet, because then you had stinky chocolate. But anyway, (laughs) (laughs) I would never eat anything that came out of my shoe. Never. That's no wonder people died of plague. That's that's all I'm going to say. Anyway, um, I thought it was nice that you leave a spoon out because I'm just thinking we are out in the middle of the woods. If I leave a spoon out on the counter right now, this time of year, like it would be empty in the morning and it would be empty because a mouse came and ate all of it. Oh, yeah. So that'd be cool for the little kid. That'd be sweet for him. The first part of what I said is is sweet. But that motherfucker, he come into my neighborhood. He come into my neighborhood. Mm mm. He's getting netted and beat up. We are moving on. Next guy arrives on December 16th, and his name is Paul Tiskefil. Sounds good to me, kid. (laughs) And his English name is Pot Scraper. Does he scrape pots? Oh, golly. I really thought there was going to be a 420 joke in there somewhere. Oh, no, no. I'm uh, I'm too, too legit to do jokes like that. Too legit to perhaps... Stop doing what you're doing? No. I'm the one that didn't get a lot of sleep last night. (laughs) (laughs) My jokes are koala tea. He is the pot scraper, yes. He steals leftovers from your pots. Nice. I mean, somebody's got to do the dishes. Next guy arrives on December 17th, and he is Askal Slaker. Okay. I'm going to wait. I'm going to do this again. Shh, shh. Askal Slaker. Ask a Laker. All right. So before yeah. you give the English name, I'm going to guess that it is his his English name is Ass Licker. No. Ah. Oh, ah. Oh, so I, I bet you I'm close, though. I bet you I'm close. That is a very unfortunate Icelandic name. His English name is Bowl Licker. So do Icelandic people poop out of bowls or do they poop into bowls or are their butts just bowls? Because his name's definitely Ass ass liquor as i said it's just a very unfortunate icelandic name because an asker is a type of bowl with a lid used instead of a dish so it has this like underneath part and then there's a lid that goes on top of it but you can take you heat your food up and then take the lid off and then you can eat out of the bowl so that's where he gets his name from from asker yeah but it certainly does sound like ass liquor doesn't it sure does anyway he hides under your bed Uh and waits for someone to put down their asker Mm -hmm. and uh which he then steals dandy that's that's where i'll leave that i'm upset that he's not ass liquor that he doesn't like just lick like asses with or without consent i feel he's tricky you know he's mischievous (sighs) this episode was supposed to be all like super serial i cannot wait until next episode it's gonna be even more fun all right so the next guy arrives on december 18th and he is hurt this calier and he's a door slammer i'm gonna assume that he just slams the shit out of doors yep yeah yeah it's it's in the name once again these are getting (laughs) they are not creatively named at all this is kind of sad okay Our next guy arrives on December 19th, and he is Skirgamor, or Skir Gobbler. Good luck with that one. What what is a skir? (laughs) Good question. I'm so glad you asked, because I could tell you, because I'm all knowing. Mm. I quit. (laughs) Get back here. You cannot quit this podcast. Get your ass back here now and sit in that fucking chair. (laughs) Okay, so Skier is a type of Icelandic yogurt. Cool. And what's his name again? Skier Gobbler? So he just eats yogurt? What a piece of shit. Oh boy, this one's a good one. This guy arrives on December 20th, and um, I'm going to take a second here to look at this name, because this is this one's a hard one. I feel like the only thing I did not get to do last night was to go on here and listen to the pronunciations of them. Once again, you're saying them all correctly. Anyone that disagrees is wrong. Okay, but Nate Craker. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. That's so bad. I don't even, I can't, this, this looks like, it looks like an alien language. It's so bad. Anyway, his 
English name is Sausage Swiper. He probably just steals sausages that are like left unattended <clears throat> off of people's plates and or other things. But I like the idea that he's stealing wieners from people. Well, technically, he is stealing sausages from people. Yeah, um, but like they're ding dong. He hides in rafters and snatches sausages that are being smoked. Oh, okay. That sounds legit. So he is what every cat wants to be. Yeah, it's just a fucking cat that's stealing your sausages. All right. So after Sausage Stealer, December 21st, we have Glugage Gear. Sounds good. Glugage Gear. Wow. This guy's a real creeper. He's called Window Peeper. And I just made a rhyme. Yeah, I'm just going to assume he peeps. No, he poops through windows. He peeps in through windows. So, okay, you think he just peeps looks in through windows. windows? Yeah, he just peeps through the windows. It's it's in the name. He's a little creepy. It's um more it's a little bit more specific. So it's it is still creepy though, but he snoops and he looks through windows in search of things to steal. Oh. Like my favorite blanket. Yeah. If that motherfucker comes at my blanket, I'll kill him. I'll snap that motherfucker's neck so fast. Okay, so on December 22nd, <laughs> Wow, you're really dark today. On December 22nd, we have Gata de Fier. Okay. His English name is Doorway Sniffer. <laughs> I'm going to fart in doorways. Oh, God. Have a sniff of that, you dummy. <laughs> I'm going to assume that he sniffs into doorways to find out what people like have that he can steal. Like food wise. Very good, JC. He ha- I did a good, I get a gold star, guys. Yay! Okay, he has an abnormally large nose and an acute sense of smell, which he uses to locate laufa broth, which is uh, leaf bread in English. And it's a, I looked at it, I was thinking about maybe doing the recipe in okay. time for the podcast so you could taste it, but it is super complicated. It's like you have to roll the dough out and most of the time in Iceland, you'll have the whole family come and join in on this. And after looking at the recipe and seeing how complicated it was, as far as there's a lot of steps and you're cutting really small pieces into the, yeah, into the dough, which is in little circles and you have to like roll it out super, super thin. So it's a very crispy, really beautiful, delicate, intricately laced thin cracker. And um, so that this is what he was going for because they're made at this time of year. Okay. Next guy, December 23rd. Ooh, we're getting near the end, guys. We're getting to the end game here. All right. Cat croaker or meat hook. Meat hook. Um, he, that's ominous. That's an ominous, he's a, he's the only one where I'm like, maybe he has meat hooks for hands and that's scary. That's a scary thing. Meat hooks for hands. Cause he could just hook onto you and never, you know, he just got you. All right, so what does this guy do? He uses a hook to steal meat. Wow, that's lame. Ugh, I was imagining, like, he has hook meat hooks for hands. He goes around, steals kids and stuff, and eats them. Ugh, that's so boring. Iceland, do better. Okay, but if you think about this time of year, it's already cold. It's cold in Iceland, and you have hunted during the fall, and you're putting your meat up. Right? You're like smoking it or whatever. And this little fucker comes and steals all the meat that you're supposed to be sustaining your family with until spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fuck that guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd definitely leave a net out for him and catch him and then beat him up. To me, like, he is, he's kind of the worst of the 13 if you go back to like just if you're just talking about the mischief part not not the christianized well, because version his his thing could be like literally your family starves to death the other ones are all like eating the the leftovers and stuff like this this guy well the sausage dude also but people don't usually live off a of sausage this guy just steals all the meat very yeah, rude. the other one. Yeah, the other one seems like um, just specifically stealing your sausages. But then, but then if you have them paired together, so you got one stealing your damn sausages, and you got the other one stealing your meat. Well, then you're eat, like super fucked. Like, yeah, you know. Okay, so the last guy we save for December twenty fourth, and he leaves by January sixth. So the whole event is over by January sixth. Okay. He is called Kurtosnicker. Kurtosnicker. Like yeah, it's my least favorite name candle stealer Ooh, i bet you hear me out on this i bet you he steals candles 
That is correct, sir. Wow. Iceland, do better. Do better with naming these guys. I know that she has 40 kids, and it's probably like, well, you know, Bob, Charlie, John. Then we just had to name them by what they do. Ugh. Okay, but he is. this one is a little creepy because he specifically follows children around in order to steal their candles, which used to be made out of tallow, which is edible. So it's kind of like he's stealing them so he can eat them, right? Because it's fat. But, I mean, he's stealing the only light source away from children. The days are darker at this point anyway. And, you know, Iceland is a little bit darker than here even. So that's kind of scary for kids, you know, to think about, oh, my gosh, you stole my candle and now I'm in complete darkness. Thank you, little dick. That's why you should always have a spare candle and or a flashlight. Get a flat. Just get a flashlight. Easy. Problem solved. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, you know, the 1800s. Why, why didn't they have flashlights? I don't understand. You do realize this is going to prompt me to find out when the fl- first flashlight was created. Just, Just make sure you spell now it right, because if you look up flashlight, you're going to get completely different results. Okay, so that's that's it. That's the 13 lads. That's Gryla. That's the black Yule Cat. And, um... Yeah, th- those guys aren't as super scary today as they used to be. Well, Gryla still is as far as like... Yeah, she still eats kids. Yeah. It's still fucked up. Who eats kids these days? That's a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like I can name a few that have talked about that at length. Mostly serial killers, you know, but I'll just throw that out there. Once again, JC brings us to almost being a, a, a true crime podcast. <laughs> and it's the one thing I don't want. No, I don't know. I enjoy listening to other people talk about murder. True crime stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want to. Because I can punch a serial killer in the face. What am I going to do against a squonk or a ghost? You can't You can't fight those. I mean, a squonk's just too cute. Listen to our episode about the squonk. You'll understand. That's all I got for this particular episode. Here's a funny thing that happened. Some of you who are also on YouTube, which is something that we're trying to repurpose our audio and put it up on our YouTube channel. So we only have like four of them up there right now. And three of them are using a service that we've just not that the service is bad. We've just decided we're going to do it ourselves. So I'm. it takes a long time. I know you guys who are YouTubers, you know how long it takes some time with your computer to upload stuff, blah, blah, blah. So I'm then so concerned about this new COPA thing or COPA or whatever you want to talk about it with all the like, children's we have to make sure that everything is coded correctly and you know we do curse in the show so and we do talk about things that i think are you know off topic i don't want any children really listening to this unless i say yeah it's not explicit okay this is what's in my head when i'm making our patreon site (laughs) and of course patreon is like hey do you have adult material and i'm like oh yeah i don't want to get in trouble you know i don't want I don't want parents to be like, you know, oh, you, my kid was listening to this and you guys said fuck like 42 times. So I click yes. You know, it's adult material. Not realizing that now we're unsearchable on Patreon because there's a difference between adult material and then, you know, us being, being explicit as far as like cursing. Apparently cursing isn't like that big of a deal. So we are currently talking to Patreon about getting that taken off you can still get to us on patreon but you have to have the direct link you can't search us out i think you did a good job at explaining that you you thought i was gonna post nudes as patreon she just took a sip of water or whatever and she almost spit it out on her laptop i'd I'd like to state that for the record i love how you talk about this as if we're in a courtroom (laughs) uh for for the record we are in a courtroom the courtroom of public opinion thank you and i am the public and my opinion is that bananas are good no i wouldn't say pure but they're good but yeah uh so we're gonna get that patreon thing fixed we're going to be updating how our tiers on patreon we had a a good ideas i mean i did i had good ideas last night uh No, no, we'll we'll release that once we get. I don't want to tell them things now, but our Patreon's gonna get updated. I well, promise. I promise to tell them the one thing. Oh yeah, we're gonna do movie reviews and show media. Let's say media reviews 
of horror and or spooky-esque things. So even like kids books, movies, stuff like that, that's going to be on one of the tiers for Patreon. We're still also kind of deciding like tier levels and stuff. So I don't want to say what price it's going to be or what tier level it's going to be. But we will probably by the beginning of next year or end of this year, we will we will have our Patreon up and going correctly with no nudity. We will remove all of the nudity that is currently just me and the paint me like one of your French girls uh, poster things. Yeah, we're, we'll 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 get rid of all that stuff. Unless you guys really want that, but <laughs> you don't. Trust me, you you and also trust me, none of you could afford it. <laughs> Ten billion dollars. <laughs> she did the thing with the pinky that Dr. Evil does. I mean she did it wrong, but she tried. Nobody was watching. I was. Oh god. Whatever. Um, that so, part's probably going to get edited out, because she does the editing. <laughs> I leave a lot of your bullshit in, okay? I know. <laughs> so, just thank you so much to the iTunes user who said that our editing was really great, because it takes me so long <laughs> to take all the bullshit out <laughs> that this man says. <laughs> And then figure out which is it as offensive. They could use it in a booper reel that is also not going to be offensive to people paying for that material. <laughs> There's so much, guys. So much stupidity. I mean, wisdom comes from my mouth. I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> I do. But at the same time, I don't. You would be quiet if you cared. Okay, so anyway, uh, Patreon thing, fixing that. Tier levels are, the t- first two tier level levels are up. And by the end of December, uh, if you guys sign up for level two for the $2 a month, then I will have a booper reel ready for you. And it's quite long. It's almost, um, looks like close to 30 minutes of material. So technically, Patreon only lets me do monthly, but... Um, that's usually going to be a bi-monthly thing if you sign up for it because I don't want to just have you pay for like 15 minutes. I'd rather you pay for like an hour to 30 minutes of material. Just follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. Are we going to set up a Facebook page, JC? I think um, by the time this episode comes out, I will have considered if I want to do it or not. There is a lot of uh, toxicity and negativity and just feelings on Facebook. It's also a good community building tool. And right now we have a community that I'd like to build. You brought up a good point in the last one, which was saying something like it was too spooky for even us. And then I felt like that was a challenge. Like, is it? Is it really too spooky for us? Screw that, man. We're getting a Facebook page and we're going to have the best community on Facebook. We're going to be very positive and positively influence people and take it back, okay, from I'm not even going to say anything else because I might actually say some really bad stuff that would get me in trouble. I I feel like what you're now doing is challenging the Facebook community to be even worse than I can handle. Because I'm going to be in charge of the Facebook page. Because she's in charge of like 97% of the other things. So I figure I'll do this one. (laughs) And then take the credit for everything. All right. So uh, that's a wrap for today. And no new business, so I think we're out of here until next week. Yeah, sure. Sounds good to me. Hey, guys, stay spooky and don't die. But if you do, contact us. On a banana phone. That's how I take all my phone calls. <laughs>